Everybody told me I shouldn't become an author because I used to party, I hang with the women, and I didn't behave in the most mannerful way at all times, but I still pursued it because God gave me a vision that nobody could take away. And it was my vision, it was my dream, and I had to honor God by doing that. Hey everyone, it's Nephi Anderson here with a brand new episode of The Path Less Traveled, a web series spotlighting millennial entrepreneurs who successfully, you got that, successfully turned their passions into lucrative careers. Today's guest is etiquette impresario, speaker, celebrity, ghostwriter, author, columnist, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Anitan Bariola. Yes. Now let me, let me give you the run down on Mr. <laughs> Bariola, okay? He is most known for being the best-selling and award-winning author for Bariola-esque. What is that? It's a book for the contemporary gentleman. It's an etiquette book and he didn't forget about the ladies. He has a book called Gentlewoman, okay? <laughs> an etiquette book for the ladies from a gentleman perspective. Now, you're like, I know him from somewhere. Like, he looks kind of familiar. His work has been featured in print, on the web, and on television for outlets such as Essence Magazine, TV One, BET, MTVU, the list goes on and on and on. You, you get where we're going with this, right? In his journey to kind of, you know, bring back the gentleman and reintroduce the lady, he has garnered supporters from everywhere. You know, my godmother, Oprah, she's on, she's <laughs> on board with things, and our first family. You know which first family I'm talking about. Anitan, thank you so much for allowing me to interview you today. Thank you for having me, Nephi. I look forward to it. So let's, let's start from the, from the beginning. All right. Talk to me about the opportunities that you created for yourself that led to what you would say was your big break. Wow. Um, I think I was just very relentless and I would do a lot of things that people weren't willing to do right. um, in order to get to the goal I wanted to get to. So, I mean, I would look on the back of magazine covers and look at the editors or look on, like I would pause the TV and look at the producers and I would search on their Facebook pages and try to find them so I could contact them and reach out. And this was long before Facebook was like what it is today. Right. It was at its bare minimum stages. So um, I was just willing to do anything because I saw the vision that, that God gave me. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, I have to get it done. It's my goal. I have to give it its just due. What can I do to reach that goal? Right. You know, so anything creative, anything um, uncanny, anything that is just people will consider crazy right. um, or uncomfortable. Come I, on, I, we, we need some examples though. I need, I need tangible examples. Like this one time I did this and it led me to this and I was well, like, let's wow. Talk about, let's talk about the Oprah thing. That yeah. was an opportunity, right? So I was at the Image Awards and my manager was saying that um, Oprah's gonna be there. I didn't know that. And I said, well shoot, if she's gonna be in the same room I'm gonna be in, why not bring a book just in case anything can happen? Right. So I walked into the awards ceremony and she was presenting something and she had security with her. She was the only person with security. So there were all these kind of things that were deterring me from, or anybody from approaching her. Right. So I said, you know what? Let me be line down there during a the break, bypass security, see what happens. That's exactly what I did. I put the book in her hand. Um, my, the palm of my hand like grazed her, oh. her lap and oh. it was like oatmeal cookies. Oh my goodness. You know, she smelled wonderfully too. I bet she She did. smelled so good and she was warm. She was very inviting. She reminded me of like a, an aunt or, you know, godmother or something very familiar. Right. And I put the book in her lap. Now yeah. the average person wouldn't do that. Right. You know, they may be in the same venue. They wouldn't have their product. It yeah. would just be kind of awkward, but I made sure that, um, Whenever there's opportunity, you have to take it. I love it. Absolutely. So what did you do to deliberately brand yourself in this space as an author? Because there are so many. Right. Well, I think it was an easy transition for me because what I write about, it's like, it's who I am. Right. The first book I was writing about myself. Right. You know, the lifestyle that I always kind of grew up with that I was taught from an early age. So it was natural. It right. was easy. It was authentic. Right. There was nothing fake about it. Um, I never had dreams of writing. Uh, my mentor suggested it a long time ago, mm -hmm. and I kind of fell into this thing, right? right. But um, when I look back, it's something that it's God-given. It was like always a part of my, my story. I just didn't see it. Right. And when I finally caught on, um, everything just took off from there. So you branded yourself by being yourself. Absolutely. I That's love the that. greatest way to brand yourself. I love that. Think about Jay-Z. Think about everyone who has strong brands. There's authenticity there at the right. core of it. Right. 
So talk to me about your mentor a little bit because there's so many people out there that are looking for guidance, looking right. for mentorship. How did you find yours? Did you find him or her or did they find you? Uh, it was like a natural, organic process. Okay. You know, we were actually friends. We went to college together. He was maybe a year older than me, and I say right. was because he passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. And um, he just inspired me. You know, he's a very inspiring person. Mm -hmm. He was young. He was successful, and he was doing things that you know, 40, 50 year olds were doing. Right. And I thought that was just so admirable. So naturally, our friendship um, kind of crossed the lines with some business ideas and right. conversations. And he suggested the idea to me, and um, if anybody else would have suggested it, I would have called them crazy, and right. I would have just kind of counted it out. Right. But because he specifically was obedient to the whatever that word was that was in him, and he right. gave it to me. Because of that is why I'm sitting here with you today. Right. Because I wouldn't have. So what did he tell it. you? What did he say? He said, I have a "Walk us through." He Let's said, "I have a moment." Okay. He said, "I have a business idea for you," okay. and. I was like, okay, cool, what is it? You know, I'm like sitting on this million dollar idea, what is it, yeah. right? And he said, I'll tell you when you're ready. Ooh. And I was like, okay. So a year passed, he still hadn't told me, and I bothered him in between, and I kind of let it go, because I was like, okay, if he's gonna tell me when I'm ready, he'll tell me when I'm ready. Right. So we were at a store, and at the counter of the store was a book called How to Be a Gentleman by John Bridges. Okay. And I picked it up naturally, because that's what I'm into. Right. And I was flipping through it, and he looks at me, and he says, you remember that business idea I told you about? He's kind of laughing. Yeah. And I'm putting two and two together. I said, you want me to write a book? Right. Mind you, I'm not a, I didn't consider myself to be a writer. Right. I was always good naturally because my mother was an English professor and came home and gave us these tests and had expectations. So right. English was easy for me, um, but it was never a goal of mine. So I thought it was crazy outlandish, but he said, I think your lifestyle is marketable. Mm. And I thought that was also kind of weird, you know, to, to put a price tag on my lifestyle. Yeah. But when I started to think about it and I thought about the friends that I had in college and small finite things that they were lacking like they were great guys right but maybe i noticed that they were lacking in certain areas that they didn't learn you know right. as far as etiquette goes so i said all right I'll, I'll give it a shot i love it that's amazing i'll give it a shot and i gave it a shot so since you weren't a writer at this time what were you doing before writing i'm from san jose silicon valley so i was naturally into technology right so i was just a like a low-key geek you wouldn't think so and i still kind of am right uh definitely nerdy you may not assume that but i'm, I'm definitely a nerd but uh right i was you had internships i was with... working at hewlett packard yeah. you know and Hitachi data systems and working on web and coding and all this stuff and that's right. what i studied in school so I thought that's who I was going to become, but I couldn't be confined to a cubicle. Mm. I'm an extrovert. I have way more to offer. I, I was doing well at the position I was in, right? But I felt like I was what doing myself was a disservice. I was an IT consultant, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just I just did like people would call in within the company internally, and right. if they had any type of uh, internet issues or anything dealing with the computer, any issues I fix. Okay. And if they were working on like the top secret projects, I'd help code. Right. So. It's something that I was skilled at, but wasn't passionate about. Right. I had to learn the difference between skill and gift. Ooh, all right now. And a lot of people kind of confuse the two, and they pursue their their skills, um, kind of ignoring the the gift. There's a subtle difference, and they're like hobbies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'm an excellent drummer. I can play piano. I can do like an array of crazy things. Right. But there was never this like pure love for it. Right. Like, man, I would do this for free. Yeah. So when I found that my my passion was in line with my gifts, mm -hmm. that marriage, right. then that led to the purpose. You know, it's right. like you're born with that stuff. You're born with your gifts, right? Right. So you already are equipped with what you need. So right. I don't really believe in competition and all that type of stuff. Right. right. You know how people compete with each other. I don't believe in that because there's nobody that can do what you do because you were created to do it. Right. And you're born with that stuff. Right. So once I learned that, I wasn't afraid of pursuing it because only I could stop myself from getting it done. Right. I love it. So what do you know now that you wish you knew when you first started, when you first became an author? <laughs> what do I wish I knew now? So that's it. I've never had that question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I don't think I will want to know because if I knew, I don't think I would pursue it. Okay. Like I wouldn't want to know how difficult it is. I wouldn't want to know. What I did know is that uh, what's happening is go what's, what's going to happen, what come to pass. Um, everything that's happened, I knew. Right. Innately, it was weird. I knew that I would sign autographs one day. I knew that I would give a, a, a thank you award speech. Right. I can't sing. I'm not an actor. Right. Those are usually the careers that lead to those type of things. Right. So why was I in the third grade perfecting my autograph? 
Right. I don't know. Because it was already in me. You know, right. like these things were there and I didn't even I didn't even put two and two together or realize it till way later on. But I think that's amazing that I practiced a thank you speech for an award. So aside from practicing your speech yeah. and your penmanship, your autograph, mm -hmm. what did you do in order to bring this idea to fruition, right? To become an author. Because it's one thing to have an idea yes. or to have a dream, but then there are some actionable steps that you need to take. So what are the key steps? Like, how do you get a manager? How that, you know, like... I put in the work. I mean, it's, there's no blueprint to this stuff. It's right. not like you want to be a doctor, you go to med school, you go right. to biology, pre-med, med school, blah, blah, blah. There's no... Pet. It's like, how do you, how do you get there, right? right. Um, a lot of trial and error and the thing that people mistake or people usually um, mess up on is they consider failure like a, a stopping point. Right. Everybody fails. Everybody successful fails and it's, it's a learning point. You learn so much in those failures. Right. You don't stop there. You say, okay, let's do it this way next time in order to get to the goal. Right. So I embraced failure. I failed until I succeeded. Um, I learned to, t to write the way that I speak. Mm -hmm. You know, I was very um, forward with women and, uh, you know, I had a way of speaking. Right. You know, back in my day. Back I had a, in your I had day. A way of, <laughs> back in his day. I had Listen a way of you. looking into the pupil. I can't. Yeah, I could look into the pupil. You could look and into like, their soul. Yeah, I mean, I, I used to have a, a very unique way of, of speaking and I learned to, to write the way that I speak. Okay. You know, and I learned to get inside of my head. Right. Because if you were to have a conversation with me, I wasn't always like, I was more than meets the eye. You would assume one thing and then you talk about, oh wow, this guy's kind of interesting. I learned right. to get inside of that right. and kind of put it on paper. Right. And um, people taught me, like based off the way they responded online and stuff when I post, they taught me what they like. They kind of taught me how to write. Right. I love and it. And as far as manager goes, I mean, it comes with the territory. Thank God, like I went through a few managers, but the guy I work with now, I mean, we went to school together. I believe everything's organic, as I right. mentioned, my mentor. Right. I like organic relationships, people you can trust um, and build with and, uh, and help contribute to their life as well. Right. So uh, naturally, you know, I, I rock with somebody that uh, I know and trust well. Right. And he's amazing. So we spoke about this briefly off camera, but shout out to his manager, Jay, because he's our first uh, guest that is not a New York State re you know, resident. Mm -hmm. um, I reached out to him back in like months, 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 months ago. And they're just like, you know what? We're not there. But when we get there, when we come to New York, we're going to see you. And they did. Yeah, so I appreciate of that. Of course, of course, of course. So talk to me about your last career low and how you bounced back from that. Because as you said, and the message that we want to get out through the series is mm -hmm. that you're going to have career lows. Oh, yeah. But you have to bounce back. So talk to us about your last one. You want to know something interesting? I um, haven't really told the story. Um, it just happened like last week. So I'm writing a, a third book entitled The Gray, and um, it's focusing on the gray area of relationships. Right. And it's kind of heavy. It's dark. So when I speak to people, they're telling me their stories, right? Right. Their dark stories. Are... So there's this thing called energy that's negative or positive, and it transfers. Right. You can't see it. It's not tangible, but... Your energy is good. I can feel it. You know that's why this, right. this conversation is flowing. But you. when you're having, when you're in the presence of bad energy, it can it can latch on to you. And this isn't like some mumbo jumbo spiritual talk. It's like this is real. Right. So I, I was in Atlanta and I was uh, filming for the Gray, um, filming some advertisements and promo, hearing stories around people. You know they're they're pouring out their soul, and I come home and I have this headache yeah. and. Um, it was like, it's almost the equivalent to maybe a soul tie or something, mm -hmm. like a sexual soul tie, uh, even though no int intimacy in that level was involved. So I had this weird headache I couldn't shake. I, saw, I, I worked Wait, out. let's go back. For yes. those that don't know what a soul tie is. Soul tie is when you have sex, you know, whether it's premarital or not. And um, when you have sex, it's a lot more than physical. You're, you're, there's so much more happening that you're exchanging, that you're doing that's beyond the physical that we're right. not aware of. And um, you can have sex with somebody you can take on their energy. Um, you can suddenly feel like depressed or angry and you don't know what's gotten a hold of you. Right. And you can even feel like you're attached to this person. It's not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing going on. It's, a, it's an attack. Right. It's an attack, so it is real. And um, back to the energy. So I had this headache I couldn't shake and um, it was weird. It was more than a headache. I don't get headaches. It was like this heaviness. Mm -hmm almost like a head cold is weird. So I said, okay, I don't have any symptoms as far as sneezing, coughing, I'm not getting sick. Right. So I, I took my vitamins, I'm generally very healthy, I was eating very clean, fleshing out with a lot of water, I was in the steam room, the sauna, working out, yoga, right. vitamins, still there. Right. Four days later, I told wow. my wife, I said, yo, I might have to go to the doctor before my trip. 
And then the night before I left, I said, can you, do you mind praying for me? Mm -hmm. So my wife began to pray for me and um, midway through, I couldn't really stand up. Like my, oh my, my legs were starting to kind of like, I was kind of like leaning on her and trying to catch my balance. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm on, I'm on the floor, I'm on my knees. And I felt this, um, I felt like, it's surreal even talking about it. I'm getting a little chills, but. Yeah, me too. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was God. You know what I'm saying? He like showed up right there, Holy Spirit. And it was uh, like the, the strange heaviness. It was just like, I was in tears. It was, we, it was yeah. supernatural. Yeah. It's, it left this thing that I, that I tried to handle on my own instead of giving it to God. Yeah. I did everything in my power. I worked out, I did this, I blah, 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 yeah. blah. And it taught me that, um, I'm not in control here, you know, just because everything is going so well. I st and I'm, I'm close, but I need to, at all times, be aware and be connected at all right. times in every environment. Um, and that was an interesting lesson. That was like a low. Yeah. I didn't think that could happen to me. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm, I'm very aware now of the energy and the, the people I'm around. Because I right. give off a lot of good energy. But right. But you never know what you can take on. So how would you change, I guess, how you do business? moving forward I'm just... learning I'm very aware of my environment I've always been but um, if I feel and I'm I'm kind of perceptive if I feel negative energy as opposed to embracing it and trying to maybe speak life into that person mm -hmm. maybe I just need to back up I'm, a, right. I'm just a I'm just a regular old dude human right. I'm a vessel you know what I mean right. so um, I'm dealing with like spiritual warfare right stuff that is beyond the physical right. when I'm dealing with people like um, gentlewoman, you know, it's like it's helping people overcome maybe trauma they experienced in their life that they never dealt with. Yeah. Well, to piggyback off of that, so you are a vessel and you have different mediums that you ministry, you, you know, you do your ministry through. Right. So one of them is your book, but another one is social media. You out here. Yes. Yes. So yes. talk to me about how you use social media strategically to further develop your brand. Um. Again, it's just all about authenticity. I just mm -hmm. show people what it looks like, like. You can, when you look at my Instagram, you're just like stepping into my world. Like you can literally hang out with me for a day and that's what my Instagram looks like. Right. You know what I mean? It's, there's no, it's like nothing um, fake. The only thing may be like maybe a book position so you can see it. Right. You know, but as, as far as everything else goes, it's like my real life. There's a lot I don't post because I'm private. Yeah. Um, that is amazing stuff. Yeah. You know, people will be inspired by it. My goal is to inspire them and let them know that they can do this. And my journey has been documented since day one from the time that I announced that I was going to write a book mm -hmm. to today. So mm -hmm. there have been people who have seen the entire journey which lets them believe, dang, I saw this guy go through all of that. I could probably do this too. I could pursue my goals. I could uh, reach my dreams as well. Well, speaking of those people, you know that we like to include you guys in on the conversation, right? So we posted a question to Instagram just to see like what your followers wanted to know, <laughs> your supporters. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's check it out. Let's see, see what, what we got. Had to say. See what they had to say. You nervous? Of course not. I love candid questions. Oh, you sure? You sure? Yeah, I like going off the top. This I, I told you, I, I I I just love authenticity. I'm addicted to it. Just showing yourself. Right. That's true. So at culinary underscore Chrissy wants to know, how do you go out? Culinary Chrissy. Yes. How do you go about getting your name out there? your name and your work out there to be recognized, especially without having proper funding. Um, She's I think, an aspiring chef, by the way. Okay, I think the first thing to, to note is that you shouldn't seek recognition, you should see, seek excellent work. Mm -hmm. You know, when you seek recognition, you sometimes bypass what needs to be done in order to receive it. Right. You know, it's, it doesn't come off as authentic. And when you're focused on excellent quality work, cooking the best food ever, making sure it's delivered to whomever it is that maybe has a platform, right? Um, separating yourself from the pack, you know, maybe focusing on specific foods or, you know, doing cool different recipes, you know, mixing this type of style with that type of style or presenting it in a, in a unique way. Um, that's the unique side of branding, but it's, the, the focus should be making an excellent dish. Right. You right. know what I mean? And, and, and the people will follow. Everything right. will follow. I definitely agree. And speaking of the people following, they're all just like, oh my gosh, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. So are, do you have anything in the works to extend your brand? Because like you said, you have so many things that you're great at. Yes. You did some audio stuff with the book. You right, had right. like a film, a little bit of film background going in there. Mm -hmm. So like anything that you plan on doing outside of books? 
Yeah, I think I never, I never put myself in a box because I'm, and nobody should like, I can't. I'm not just a writer. Right. There's so much that I do and so much I want to get out. That's why some people look at Kanye West like this guy's crazy, but he's trying to get out all the stuff in his head. Right. To like to help people. Right. You know, it's like more than just a rapper. I'm more than just a writer. I do so much and. Um, as it comes, I'm I'm welcome to it. You know yeah. what I mean? Whether that's painting, whatever, whatever it is, the new ideas always come to me. Generally, very artistic ideas. But um, the goal is to. This is all like rooted in you know, it's etiquette and this and that. The goal yeah. in my life is to introduce you to the God that I know. Ooh. You see my light. You see the way that I live. You see all this beautiful stuff. Like, how is that possible? Is right. it me? No, I'm, I'm literally like a flawed, sinful human being, you know what I mean? Right. But the God I'm connected to is the reason that my life is the way that it is. Right. And if I can introduce you to that, I mean, it's so beautiful. Life is it's so good with that that I want you to have that too. Right. So I'm going to give that to you any way I could give it to you. If it's a book, if it's... Whatever it is. I'm going to just put the seed out there that you should do fashion. That's a part of your whole lifestyle. You can't it talk is. about your brand without fashion. It is. Okay. Um, the, hey, man. This is, I'll talk about being authentic. The mic drop. We got We still got to rock. Yeah. So we, we got to be authentic. We can't, like, don't Photoshop this. Don't, uh, you know what I mean? Don't cut this out. Don't cut this out. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And, I mean, it, that's also a tool. You know what I mean? Like, it could be a tool to attract, you know what I mean? People right. are more interested in me, so okay, here's my message. Right. I'm, I'm open to it all. Um, I think fashion is one of the okay, things, too. Okay, I'm yeah, just I'm saying, I'm just saying. So and I appreciate in, that, too. No problem. So in closing, and just going off of you saying that you want to introduce people to the God that you know. Yes. Um, you have somebody that's coming pretty soon that you're going to be introducing to the God <laughs> that you know. Congratulations Thank on you. the little addition to the family that's on the way. Thank you very are much. You having, are you going to have a gentle woman? Are you going to have a gentle man? A little burial esque brother, you know, a little oh. baby boy is what I call him. Um, yeah, I'm having a little son, and I'm, you know, my wife and I are extremely, extremely happy, joyful, excited. And I mean, I put so much into other people and pour so much, I get to pour so much into my own. I know. love it. Congratulations. Thank you very We're much. We're going to keep our eyes peeled for everything that you have going on because we need more people like you. Positive. Thank you. Honest, authentic. Yes. If you guys enjoyed this interview as much as I did, I need you guys to let me know it. Don't play games. Don't be cheap. I need you to like. Like it. I need you to comment. Comment. I need you to subscribe. Follow, subscribe, all that. get this man's book. Of course. Book. Amazon. Okay. Download on your iPhone. And look out for the gray. It's going to be Look out for the gray. Oof, it's deep. Thanks so much. Until next time. Bye. Thank you for having me. Take care. You know, my godmother, Oprah, she's on She's on board with things. And our first family, you know which first family I'm talking about. Anitan, thank you so much for allowing me to interview you today. Thank you for having me, nephew. I look forward to it. So let's let's start from the from the beginning. All right. Talk to me about the opportunities that you created for yourself that led to what you would say was your big break. Wow. Um, I think I was just very relentless, and I would do a lot of things that people weren't willing to do. Right. Um, in order to get to the goal I wanted to get to. So, I mean, I would look on the back of magazine covers and look at the editors and look on, like I would pause the TV and look at the producers and I would search on their Facebook pages and try to find them so I could contact them and reach out. And this was long before Facebook was like what it is today. Right. It was at its bare minimum stages. So, um, I was just willing to do anything because I saw the vision that, that God gave me. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, I have to get it done it's my goal. I have to give it its just due. What can I do to reach that goal? Right. You know, so anything creative, anything um, uncanny, anything that is just people will consider crazy. Right. Um, or uncomfortable. Come I, on, I, we, we need some examples, though. I need I need tangible examples. Like this one time I did this and it led me to this. And I was well, like, let's wow. Talk about, let's talk about the Oprah thing. That yeah. was an opportunity, right? So I was at the Image Awards and my manager was saying that um, Oprah's going to be there. I didn't know that. And... I said, well, shoot, if she's going to be in the same room I'm going to be in, why not bring a book just in case anything can happen? Right. So I walked 
into the award ceremony and she was presenting something and she had security with her. She was the only person with security. So there were all these kind of things that were deterring me from, or anybody from approaching her. Right. So I say together he was maybe a year older than me and I say right. was because he passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. And um, he just inspired me. You know, he's a very inspiring person. Mm -hmm. He was young, he was successful and he was doing things that you know 40 50 year olds were doing right and i thought that was just so admirable so naturally our friendship um kind of crossed the lines with some business ideas and right. conversations and he suggested the idea to me and um if anybody else would have suggested it i would have called them crazy and right. i would have just kind of counted it out right but because he specifically was obedient to the whatever that word was that was in him and he right. gave it to me because of that is why I'm sitting here with you today. Right. Because I wouldn't have. So what did he tell it. you? What did he say? He said I have a bit, Walk uh, us through. He well, said I have a moment. Okay. He said I have a business idea for you, okay. and I was like, okay, cool. What is it? You know, I'm like sitting on this million dollar idea. What is it? Yeah. Right. And he said, I'll tell you when you're ready. Ooh. And I was like, okay. So a year passed. He still hadn't told me, and I bothered him in between, and I kind of let it go because I was like, okay, if he's going to tell me when I'm ready, he'll tell me when I'm ready. Right. So. We were at a store, and at the counter of the store was a book called How to Be a Gentleman by John Bridges. Okay. And I picked it up naturally, because that's what I'm into. Right. And I was flipping through it, and he looks at me, and he says, you remember that business idea I told you about? He's kind of laughing. Yeah. And I'm putting two and two together. I said, you want me to write a book? Right. Mind you, I'm not a, I didn't consider myself to be a writer. Right. I was always good, naturally, because my mother was an English professor, and came home and gave us these tests and had expectations, so right. English was easy for me. Um, but it was never a goal of mine. So I thought it was crazy outlandish, but he said, I think your lifestyle is marketable. Mm. And I thought that was also kind of weird, you know, to, to put a price tag on my lifestyle. Yeah. But when I started to think about it and I thought about the friends that I had in college and small, finite things that they were lacking, like they were great guys. Right. But maybe I noticed that they were lacking in certain areas that they didn't learn, you know, right. as far as etiquette goes. So I said, all right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I love it. That's amazing. I'll give it a shot. And I gave it a shot. So since you weren't a writer at this time, what were you doing before writing? I'm from San Jose, Silicon Valley, so I was naturally into technology. Right. So I was just a like a low-key geek. You wouldn't think so, and I still kind of am. Right. Uh, definitely nerdy. You may not assume that, but I'm, I'm definitely a nerd. But uh, right, I was, you had internships. I was with... working at Hewlett Packard, yeah. you know, and Hitachi Data Systems, and working on web and coding and all this stuff. And that's right. what I studied in school. So I thought that's who I was going to become, but I couldn't be confined to a cubicle. Mm. I'm an extrovert. I have way more to offer. I, I was doing well at the position I was in. Right. But I felt like I was what position doing myself was that? a disservice. I was an IT consultant, you know mm -hmm. I mean? I just, I just did like people would call in within the company internally and right. if they had any type of uh, internet issues or anything dealing with the computer, any issues I'd fix. Okay. And if they were working on like top secret projects, I'd help code. Right. So it's something that I was skilled at, but wasn't passionate about. Right. I had to learn the difference between skill and gift. Ooh. All right now. And a lot of people kind of confuse the two, and they pursue their their skills, um, kind of ignoring the the gift. There's a subtle difference, and they're like hobbies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'm an excellent drummer. I can play piano. I can. Everybody told me I shouldn't become an author because I used to party, I had a lot of women, and I didn't behave in the most mannerable way at all times, but I still pursued it because God gave me a vision that nobody could take away, and it was my vision, it was my dream, and I had to honor God by doing it. Hey everyone, it's Nephi Anderson here with a brand new episode of The Path Less Traveled a web series spotlighting millennial entrepreneurs who successfully, you got that, successfully turned their passions into lucrative careers. Today's guest is etiquette impresario, speaker, celebrity ghostwriter, author, columnist, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Anitan Bariola. Yes. Now let me, let me give you the run down on Mr. <laughs> Bariola, okay? He is most known for being the best-selling and award-winning author for Bariola-esque. What is that? It's a book for the contemporary gentleman. It's an etiquette book, and he didn't forget about the ladies. He has a book called Gentlewoman, okay? <laughs> an etiquette book for the ladies from a gentleman perspective. Now, you're like, I know him from somewhere. Like, he looks kind of familiar. 
His work has been featured in print, on the web, and on television for outlets such as Essence Magazine, TV One, BET, MTVU, the list goes on and on and on. You, you get where we're going with this, right? In his journey to kind of, you know, bring back the gentleman and reintroduce the lady, he has garnered supporters from everywhere. You know what? Let me D-line down there during a the break, bypass security, see what happens. That's exactly what I did. I put the book in her hand. Um, my the palm of my hand like grazed her oh. her lap and oh. it was like oatmeal cookies. Oh my goodness! You know she smelled wonderfully too. I bet she she did. smelled so good and she was warm. She was very inviting. She reminded me of like a, an aunt or you know godmother or something very familiar. Right. And I put the book in her lap. Now yeah. the average person wouldn't do that. Right. You know they may be in the same venue. They wouldn't have their product. It yeah. would just be kind of awkward. But I made sure that. Um, Whenever there's opportunity, you have to take it. I love it. Absolutely. So what did you do to deliberately brand yourself in this space as an author? Because there are so many. Right. Well, I think it was an easy transition for me because what I write about, it's like, it's who I am. Right. The first book I was writing about myself. Right. You know, the lifestyle that I always kind of grew up with that I was taught from an early age. So it was natural. It right. was easy. It was authentic. Right. There was nothing fake about it. Um, I never had dreams of writing. Uh, my mentor suggested it a long time ago, mm -hmm. and I kind of fell into this thing, right? right. But um, when I look back, it's something that it's God-given. It was like always a part of my, my story. I just didn't see it. Right. And when I finally caught on, um, everything just took off from there. So you branded yourself by being yourself. Absolutely. I That's love the that. greatest way to brand yourself. I love that. Think about Jay-Z. Think about everyone who has strong brands. There's authenticity there at the right. core of it. Right. Right. So talk to me about your mentor a little bit, because there's so many people out there that are looking for guidance, looking right. for mentorship. How did you find yours? Did you find him or her, or did they find you? Uh, it was like a natural, organic process. Okay. You know, we were actually friends. We went to college together.